you so long, yeah. but I've been in Oxford for a while. So. Well, you think so? Who cares? Okay. So welcome everybody. We're uh, we're running this meeting um, as a sort of a pseudo virtual and in attendance meeting tonight. But welcome. This is the Tanglewood Property Stakeholders Meeting. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to come tonight and hear what's going on with Tanglewood, and we want to hear from you guys. Um, it's January 24th, obviously, there's a few introductions I'd like to do um, tonight. And I'd like to introduce uh, Sally Hine as our Director of Community Services. She's here. She's my boss. Um, we also have with us is um, uh, Matthew Rosen Bloom Jones, who's with our planning department. And who else do we have? We have Ashley Gibbs in the back with the headphones on. She is she's hiding. She's our IT helper. Um, and then, of course, my name's Matt Reno. I'm a project manager for the Department of Community Services, and I'm sort of leading the, the project here with our, with our department. Um, and then with us tonight, we have um, from our consultants with Human and Rody, we've got Lynette Penny, who is a registered landscape architect, and then um, John Rhodes uh, as well. So what I'd like to do is a um, couple quick announcements. If you need restrooms, out the door to the right, men's and women's rooms. In the event that we have a, any type of a situation, you need to get out of the building, you would go out straight down the stairwell at the front of the exit, or you could go down the hallway to the right to the second set of stairwells, and that would take you out to the building as well. Um, we'd like to let everybody know that in case there's some type of emergency and everybody has to get out. What we'll do um, is we have a presentation that we'll, um, we'll go through tonight. Um, it'll be presented um, in combination with myself and also the uh, consultants. We'll go over some Tanglewood um, components of the master plan that we're working on. But what I first want to do is talk to you a little bit about how we got here. So back in March 21st, um, the Friends of Tanglewood uh, group had attended one of our city council meetings. Uh, and they came to the meeting and they were sharing their, um, their passion for Tanglewood Park. Um, and through that passion, they'd, they'd um, asked council a few few items, one of which was they would uh, like to see some type of a redesignation of the property um, as either a park or a natural area. Um, they had asked for addition of parking, signage, and some sort of informational kiosk information. Um, they also had asked for an increased awareness of Tanglewood um, through the city's website and any other means that we might be able to come up with. Um, and then lastly, the, um, they had asked for enhanced maintenance um, of the property. Um, that can be anything from trail maintenance to um, trash pickup to recy trash receptacles, any number of different things. Um, so, so during that council meeting, um, council then had some comments as well. Um, first off, they were very impressed by the presentation that um, the Friends of Tanglewood put on, and it was a, it was a very well put together um, presentation. And clearly, like I said, you can tell that they have a passion for that piece of property. Council's comments were that they would like to see several accessible trails within the property. Um, they would like staff to research any grants that might be available for any type of improvements that may come about as part of the master planning process. And then the last thing is they would like to see the, the property redesignated as a city park. So those are the things that were directives that kind of came from the um, Friends of Tanglewood and then the city um, uh, council's comments. So what we were able to do then is the city manager had given us some direction to go ahead and bring on a consultant to allow us to, to figure out, let's take a look at um, the property. Uh, let's look at the 1990 master plan, which we had in place, but was never fully implemented um, on the property. So what we determined was that we need to bring on a consultant to help us with this. So um, what we were able to do, we said, you know, uh, where do we go from here after the first meeting? And essentially, we needed to hire a consultant. We went through our, our processes where we um, put in a request for proposals out. We um, we put together the um, uh, sort of a, a list of, of expectations of the consultant. And um, and from that, we would end up hiring so we ended up um, hiring Human and Rody, um, who are extremely experienced uh, with 
master plan um, development. Uh, they're going to go over a few examples here. Um, so what we were going to end up doing was hire the consultant to revise the 1990 master plan. And part of that would be gathering community input. That's why we are having a stakeholders meeting tonight. Um, is that we it's important for us to understand you as residents, business owners, those that are just residents within the community. You have input that we'd like to hear from. What would you like to see? What are your concerns or comments related to Tanglewood? Um, and then lastly is the consultant will work on revising or preparing for us a new master plan. And the master plan for us would then be a roadmap for how we would move forward with um, allocating resources to Tanglewood Park and or making improvements, whatever it may be. Uh, so that's kind of um, you know, where we're headed. So as I said, Human and Rody was brought on. They're from Towson, Maryland. They've got 40 years of experience in doing master plans. Um, they've got a number of different staff um, of engineers um, and architects on board. And uh, they've got experience with other municipalities. They've done stuff for Enroll County, Frederick County, um, and other municipalities and county agencies that we thought were um, good a good basis for being able to um, uh, ensure that that their RN result was going to be what we had uh, expected. But. Oops. There we go. Um, so as I said, there was they, they had um, two examples here um, would be of uh, two master planning efforts they had worked on. So at this point, what I'd like to do is bring up Lynette Penny. She's the registered landscape architect, and she's going to tell you a little bit about um, these projects, uh, and then we're going to move straight into our presentations. Um, yeah, uh, just a couple of examples of, of some of the work we do with a, or a passive type of, of park like Tanglewood will be, as opposed to something that has all the ball fields and, you know, football fields and playgrounds and whatnot. So just the South River uh, Farm Park, uh, Anne Arundel County um, on the Chesapeake Bay, a little bit larger than Tanglewood, 180 some acres, but mostly wooded, not a lot going on, not, not a lot that can be done with the site, a lot of environmental constraints, particularly critical area of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and so after the process, like we're going through now with the community input, uh, which just decided to do uh, some of the improvements in only the open areas of the site, and just to concentrate any of that development, such as parks, mineral parking, uh, playgrounds, um, maybe a rest restroom pavilion, and Crispy golf in this case in the open areas and then otherwise it's just all trails throughout the wooded portion of the site because of you know that's about all that the site would um you know let us do and that is what the community wanted done with that particular parcel of land. The other example, Hammond's connection at the dairy farm, is it's, it's different. Well, it's similar in that it's a pa another passive park example of a slightly different nature. But um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but it just involves mostly the agriculture and education and maintaining rural characteristics of that portion of, of Anne Arundel County. And so there are community gardens, demonstration gardens, orchard and trails and um, it just uh, it, trying to demonstrate different types of stormwater management practices um, and just to preserve the character of, of and nature of the site that's that's there. So in those ways, those are sort of similar to where we want to go with, with Tanglewood. So that's what presented that for you. So Matt's already kind of given you all the background of why we're here and what we're doing. And he's also alluded to some of the aspects of what the master plan process is. But I'm just, you know, go through a little again, doesn't help hurt to repeat it sometimes. So you understand it. So and we have to start out by preparing a base map of existing conditions. We need something on paper that we can work with. So you see some the results of that sort of up on the boards up here, and you'll see some more of that as we go along. So then we visit the site. We've been to the site with some of you that are in the audience now. We, but we also investigate the existing conditions that are there, and we gather information about the site, its history, the use of the property, and things that Matt's already kind of gone over with you, and some of you know better than any of us. The history of the site as you you know lived and watched it all i'm sure over over time 
So we take all that information and we prepare a site analysis plan. And there's actually the example of it on the board here, and we'll go into that a little bit further at later on in the presentation. Um, then, as Matt said, this is why we're here to obtain stakeholder input in in the what we want to do with the with the, this piece of property. We call that programming, determining the program for the site, the things that we want to do with it. So we take the programming, the site analysis, and the existing conditions information, and that's where where we go into the master plan drawing. So it shows you know all the recommendations that we've all looked essentially agreed that we would like to see it done on the site and it takes into consideration all the things that we just talked about the site conditions any of the restrictions and and this programming that we're going to talk about this evening at that point now we have something on paper uh, with some things that are more or less defined as to what wants to happen and that will prepare a cost estimate for the city so that they can you know figure that into their budget to implement it and to um, maintain whatever it is that we're going to do here. Um, finally, then for us, finally for us, we take all the information I just talked about and compile it into a master plan report. So it's a record of the, the planning process. So it'll be a document there to memorialize whatever what this all that we've been going to be going through here. And finally, as Matt said as well earlier, uh, the final thing is to get the city council to sign off on the master plan so that then it can move forward in whatever fashion is determined through this process. Yeah. So I thought we would just start with the, just to get familiar with the site. Is everyone more or less familiar with the site? Is there anyone here that has never been there? Or so if you're all pretty well familiar with the site, looking like I'm not hearing any nays. Yeah. We've never been you haven't been, never been there. Live right, no, live right across the park. Then I'm going to talk to you. So that you know exactly and, who and also our, and our virtual attendees. And our virtual attendees yeah, at home as well. Camera. Correct. Yep. So okay. So here we are. We're we're, we're on Zug Road. And um, I'm just gonna get you right. This yellow line is the outline of the property. It's a big wooded site, about 128 acres. Okay, on Zug Road. That's really the only road that has any front that the property has any frontage on. Yes, sir. So, um, but Matt, before about it being uh, redesignated, it was always big, just wooded area, right? Yeah. Exactly. I'm sorry. It's always only been a wooded area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think. At least in the last recent decades. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So we got South Road, and you, you cross the railroad tracks, the Pope's Creek line here, and you come here, and at the end of it is an industrial park. Uh -huh. you're, you know, so we got that. That's good. And that ends right here at the Amtrak line. So that's on this side. So we've got Zug Road, Pope's Creek Line, come down here to Northridge Community. So it's here on the south. North is straight up, if that helps anybody at all, but on the south here. And then we got the Amtrak line over here. So we got Bowie Station on this side and Old Bowie Huntington Community on the other side. So we're all good with that. I want to also point out that the New Stop Ranch is a creek that runs along the southern edge of the property. And it's important because as we go along and we look at other aerials, where the property line isn't necessarily shown, that'll be sort of like your, your landmarks to know where the property is. So we're always gonna be saying the New Stop Ranch, Pope's Creek Line, most of the time Zug Road, and, and the railroad track, the Amtrak on the side. So just sort of keep that in mind. So um, I think, it, it, again, those who have been at the property, that we know that this is more or less the, what would you call the primary entry to the, to the site? Right here on Zug Road at the bend. And then, of course, there's the southern entrance off of the uh, Northridge community that crosses the creek and you get into the back, sort of the back, so to speak, the southern end of the site. So that's where we are. That's where we're that's where we are now. So I'm going to take us a little backwards in time a little bit. We found these historical aerials. Now, sadly, and of course, you can imagine we don't have anything prior to that because, you know, they're not taking aerial photography. Way back when, when the when the Zugs were farming this property, but here again, I'm going to show you. Pope's Creek line is still is 1938. Pope's Creek line is here. New Stop Ranch is on the bottom, and we have a railroad line here. It's not yet uh, Amtrak in 1939, but there it is. And eventually, Zug Road will come through, come through here at the top. So this is our property in 1938, aerial wise. Now. Back in the books, women, not yet. Yep. Back in the eighteen, you know, mid eighteen hundreds, when it was the sub farm, all of this would have been farmland in here. 
So um, even by 1938, you know, the forest is starting to creep in to the um, fields that have been abandoned. So you can see that there's, you know, obviously much less farming than there probably was way back in the 1800s. So, okay, now we can go. We're gonna fast forward to 1977 because that's kind of the way aerial topography works sometimes. So, um, so you can see Northridge community is not there yet, but we do have the new stop ranch. We still have Pope's Creek line. We do have the Amtrak now and here's Zog Road has come through. So everybody kind of clearing where we are because I know you were saying you had trouble reading maps, but sort of getting the gist of that. Okay, great. So um, at this point, um, there's no more farming anywhere on the property, obviously. And there's, as we were discussing earlier, we have the ball field that was up here in the 50s and 60s, um, as you can see quite, still see quite clearly, even though it was abandoned at some point. And anybody knows what, when that was, but anyway, somewhere after the 60s that was abandoned and no longer used. And you could still see on this area a little bit of a gravel road that was probably something left over from the farm and a little parking, gravel parking area sort of at the top of the hill here. And um, so, in the early 70s, the city acquired the property for for their for their use. So we're going to leapfrog up to year 2000, and you can see that up here where the ball field is, nature's starting to take over. It's, the, all the, the trees are starting to grow. You can see the little green dots up where the ball field was. And Northridge community has been built. It was built in 1992, so that's clear here. And again, we have the no, new stock branch. Pope Creek line, got Sug Road in here and Amtrak. So here's our property. Um, so we're getting close. And by this time as well, uh, the city has closed off that entrance, so to speak, to the to the park property because things were going on on the property that didn't, people didn't want happening. So it got closed off. And um, however, you know, a little bit further on, the city removed uh, the park from their, their active park list in 2016. So I think we'll go up one more. And yep. here we are again, back where we started it, essentially. I'm just gonna do it again, Zug Road, Pokes Creek Line. Here's the new stop branch and the Amtrak line over there and Northridge. So you can see by this time, even it seems like a short period of time, less than 30 years, this whole site is now wooded. And you thought that it was always wooded, but it was not. It's, it's all, it's nature filling in the farm fields that were here way back when. So, um, yep, the no more ball field, uh, all wooded and with sort of an even age of oaks and pines in there. That's how we know that it was farmed because everything grew up sort of at the same time when it farms were abandoned. And um, those who are very familiar with the site know that there are uh, unapproved trails that go all, all throughout the, the wooded area here. And if you come to visit the, the park, the, the site, and to go walk, you park along Zug Road and you kind of come in on in the same the same place as before, but it's closed off. Or you come in from the south and cross the creek and hike your way into the southern part of the site down here. Okay, perfect. Yep. So now I just have some photographs to orient you to what we just looking at and plan view a little bit, just a brief, brief sort of tour through the site a little bit. So we are here at the entrance that's been closed off with the concrete barriers. And this is where you would enter and, and start to walk up into the up into the site. Um, and parking is along South Road here. The next pictures are just some views looking from, you know, as you're, you're approaching, you cross the uh, Pope's Creek line over here and you approach the park on South Road, heading towards the industrial park over here. So we just look in left and right as I'm facing facing the wooded area. And there's the, you can, can't quite see them, but those are the concrete barriers right there that we were just looking at in the previous picture. So, um, so we mentioned, of course, that the site has got lots of trails on it now. And the, uh, let's see, the Friends of Tanglewood and the Bowie Multimodal Access and Public Spaces Group, the MAPS group, um, they have been enhancing the existing series of trails over the years and have developed this really fantastic uh, trail map system. It's color coded um, and a legend in the bottom that tells you how long each, each piece is and what the conditions of the trail are. So we know that these groups are 
are very, very well invested in this in this property. And currently they are the primary source of maintenance for the trails. Um, so we sort of entered the site here where those barriers were, and we're kind of going up the that old gravel road. I was pointing out one of those aerials, which, which is now all covered over, and you know, over the over the decades, literally, that that's been abandoned. And so we were coming up, and then we're almost at the top of the hill. It's a little bit left of the roadway as well. Next one, and we get sort of the top of the hill, and we have, and it's so hard to see in this slide, and I apologize for that. But if you look. Eventually, look if you want to look at it on, on the website, you can see the pictures much more clearly. So I apologize for that. But this is the ruins, the stone foundation ruins of the old Zug barn. So, you you know, that's evidence of the history of the site, which is kind of really kind of a, a cool um, landmark for for the trail system here. And again, you know, the, you'll see the trail maps posted in various places to keep you oriented and to, to find the this little the sites like the, the sub ruins are, are marked on their map. I just wanted to include a few pictures of what it looks like in inside the park. So, you know, if you're walking along the trail, it, it's filled with, you know, fallen trees. That's what happens in nature. And then that's and it, we're, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but we bantied around the idea that maybe Tanglewood came from the idea of the tangles from, of, of the trees falling down and crisscrossing. Not sure if that's true or not, but it's a nice story anyway. Um, and then other portions of the tra of the trail have other interesting vegetation. So there's lots of nice experiences as you walk through the, the site. And just a, a few more few more trail pictures. Um, as I said earlier, you saw the trail map, different colors on each of the trails. And again, cannot see it, but there is actually uh, an orange paint mark on it on the tree over here. And so those are called blazes. So throughout the, the, the property on the trails, there are different colors painted on the trees. They're called blazes. So that helps orient you so you know where you are so you can follow and not, and not get lost potentially. So they're, you know, blue and green and orange and red and so on. And there are also some other trail markers like this that has de have decals on it. That's for the red trail. And then the next slide is just a couple examples. You might see some um, wooden wooden markers that have the colors of the trail on it as well. So it keeps you keeps you oriented, keeps you going in the right direction. Um, what, the green trail has this foot, wooden footbridge over one of these whaled channel things that go through the site. And um, part of uh, what we've been asked to do is to evaluate the, this um, situation and offer up some potential alternatives for the crossing of this, this channel here, because uh, it is in poor condition and the city has deter determined that it's not uh, in good enough condition for people to use, so it's been closed off. So we're just gonna, you know, part of our job is to find some alternatives potentially. And then we get to the southern part of the site that we were talking about near Northridge. So we're coming down the trails from Tanglewood and cross the new stock ranch here on the on these uh, stones that cross the, the creek. And that will take you up to these paved path that takes you into the Northridge area. So that's your connection with the park, this paved trail and then crossing the creek into up to the natural trails. Okay, so here we are. This this is this plan that's over here in front of you. Um, this is our site analysis plan. We've taken um, all the information that we've gathered about the physical condition of the site um, and put it all together into a, this graphic illustration of um, the existing natural and man-made conditions and features of the property. So it, it get, it's used in the master plan planning process as a tool for understanding the site and planning appropriate development on it. So um, what we'll see are slopes. And uh, if you get up close to the, the board up here, you can see it up in the legend, um, various sh uh, shading that represents the steepness of the, of the land. So the darker the shading, the steeper the slope is, just to give you some idea how that works. Um, we also look at the soils in case, you know, we want to look at trail development or any other improvements, or even just to give us an idea before we've um, done an environmental analysis, it gives us an idea where, this, where the wet soils are, 
and where wetlands would might be located. So that's a good tool there. We um, designate, you know, show all the streams. We have, again, new stock ranch down here that we've been talking about. There's also a, a little creek that goes down this east side parallel with the Pokes Creek area. Um, and then there are a bunch of these, you see the other blue lines that come down in, in these areas. Those are other little drainage ways. So those are important features to make note of. Floodplains that are associated with any of the streams, wetlands and, and their buffers. There's always um, a buffer uh, beyond the wetland limits to protect the wetlands from development and encroachment. Um, we look at the vegetation, like we said, uh, the pines and the oaks that came up at, well, well, they, when the farm fields were abandoned. And so that just gives us a clue as to the history and the age of a site and so on. Um, we look at the roads like Zub Road and all the trails and the trail system. We've um, all the trails have been GIS located by the city that's on our map. And we color coded them to correspond to the trail maps that are out there on the site. So those who are very familiar with the site will be able to understand that uh, this is the red trail. That's the purple trail, you know, and there's the green trail and so on that goes with the, the map that's out there on the site and that we, we looked at earlier. Um, we look at the stream crossings. I mean, we, we just saw the one that's uh, where we cross over from, from Northridge and cross over and come into the site. Uh, we looked at the little the footbridge that's over here. That's also considered a crossing. And we'll also, you know, we, we're taking into consideration it's actually a culvert right here at the what we call the entrance to the site where that old gravel road came in. And that's actually connecting a stream and connecting two wetlands on either side of it, which, you know, you don't really pay much a lot of attention to until I understand. I've heard someone tell me that there's skunk cabbage that comes up in here in the spring. So that is like the pri a primary visual indicator that this, that wetlands are here. So we'll look, you know, we look at that sort of thing. Existing structures, now there's not many, but again, we have the advantage, you know, of, of seeing the sub uh, barn ruins, which is kind of an exciting thing. And, you know, in the site access, you know, how are we going to approach um, entering the site from here on? This this slide is actually the, the slide of, of this map that's on the easel here. I wanted to show it in two parts. This is actually the, the actual final um, site analysis. This dark green, the dark green areas. This is our areas of environmental protection, shall we say. It, what's special in Prince George's County is that they have a requirement to delineate a vegetated buffer to protect the site's natural resources. They call it the primary management area. So it's above and beyond all the regular or a culmination of, of all the environmental factors on the site. So it's the, the farthest limit of, of where they would like to see, the, the, the county would like to see the um, environmental and resources protected. So it inc includes the stream buffers we talked about, the 100-year floodplain, all the wetland buffers, and goes, uh, goes up the hill to the, encompasses the steep slopes, 15% and greater. <clears throat> So it widens, even widens the swath of area where they would like to have protection of those natural resources. So it's something very important for us to keep in mind as we move forward and we think about what improvements might happen on the site and how this might impact our decisions in that regard. So, and finally, we wanted to let you all know that the and I have to read it because I can never say it right. Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission has the vision for a sec segment of the Bowie Heritage Trail to um, go touch, go through the site. Now, here's our Tanglewood property. I think you'll all be familiar with that sort of odd shape of it by now. Um, and this red line that's going through here is the WBNA Trail, and they are proposing that the um, we have heritage trail, this purple dashed line will, you know, make sort of make a little deviation and connect back up here in the north. And right now, tentatively, they're thinking that based on this map, that maybe it will be sort of parallel to the Pope's Creek line on this eastern side of the property. And as we've been seeing with the site analysis, which is why we do the site analysis, that we can already see that it might be very challenging to 
to get a trail in there and to have it have ADA compliance, you know, that's the accessibility, you know, for wheelchairs and that has some regulations, federal regulations that take place and a trail of this nature is uh, obligated to comply with all of those, all of those restrictions. So, but anyway, be that as it may, just know that um, there's some thought to perhaps having this connected to a bigger trail system, not just, you know, not just on this side. <clears throat> okay. That's all I know. It's a lot of information that we went over in a short period of time, um, but it's uh, it's important for you know you as stakeholders to understand um, you know what we're trying to do and what the consultants working on and sort of the um, the challenges that we're we're identifying you know as we work through this master planning process. Um, all of that's going to have you know bearing on on what we can do, what what people may want to see, what some stakers stakeholders would not like to see. Um, so that's still all going to shake out over the next. Um, say six weeks or so, the consultant's going to take um, into account stakeholder comments. Um, we're gonna open that up for comments from you guys in just a few minutes, as well as those of you in the virtual land, we'll do our best to get to the, I can see the chat's just going crazy. So people are, are submitting, so we'll get to that um, as best we can. Um, but yeah, so um, again, the, the purpose of this is to hear from you guys. So I think what we'll do now is um, we'll go ahead and open up for some comments and we'll do our best to document everything and we'll go from there. <clears throat> yes, sir. So can I back up a minute to the contours you have for this primary management mm -hmm. uh -huh. area? Is this something that, is that contour something that the county has already designated or is this just your interpretation of what the of what the county rates are. Right, this is our interpretation of the county regulations at this point. Okay. This is all uh, unofficial. It's not been you know, submitted to any agencies. This is our preliminary look-see at what's going on on the site to guide us towards you know, what we want to do with the site. And at that, if, if, an, if there was something to be developed on here that became a, an, an actuality that needed some sort of permitting from an agency, then we'd have all these these technical maps and reports, environmental reports and whatnot that would go along with the submission for to an agency for approval of some improvements of any note on here. So thank you. I got, okay. Yes, sir. Another question. <clears throat> it said that the uh, city council wanted to make this a city park. What's is it for the financing of this or um no, no it's it's already a city owned property so we already own it it's mm -hmm. just at one time it was designated we called it tanglewood park and we've since now realized that because you saw the the um the jersey barriers we had to put up we've had a tremendous problem um before the jersey barriers were put in place with people um, backing their trucks up or vehicles up and dumping stuff in the road in front of the gates in fact, we had had um, situations where people had taken cars to all the way to the top of the hill and lit them on fire and burned them, and then we had to haul them out of there. So at that point, we determined that until we come up with a solution for this property and what we may do with it and what it may become, it was best for us just to close off the property to make it an, sort of an unofficial um, natural area without any um, formal um, involvement from the city standpoint so in that case that's where the park dropped off of it that the term park but um what council has asked us to do is to to determine like how do we want to redesignate this and that's part of this process is if if the voices um, from the stakeholders are such that they say you know what we really like that it's just quiet and it's woods and there's deer and there's animals and and there's no formal recreation then maybe it will become the Tanglewood Natural Area or Tanglewood Forest or something, it won't carry or may not carry the designation of the term park. Many of you have who are aware of all the parks that the city of Bowie has, and typically when you use the word park, you're, you're thinking ball fields, you're thinking parking lots, you're thinking you know asphalt improvement trails, restrooms, those things. Tanglewood doesn't have any of that. So, so that designation um, is yet to be determined what it may become. Um, but it, it may become a park or it may be, I should say, phrased as Tanglewood Park, but it also could maybe just become Tanglewood Forest or 
just Tanglewood. So we're not sure yet. Does that answer your question? Yeah, sort, of? sort of, I guess. I mean, <clears throat> Does the city have control now in terms of there's vandalism or something going yes. on? Does the city still respond to it, or does it have to be designated as a no? Not, no, I mean, there on a regular basis, our parks and grounds true crews are going up there and having to remove debris that's been dumped in the roadway. Okay. It's a Zug Road's a city road, so it's it's usually our our uh, parks and grounds department that is tasked with having to do that cleanup. Um, it could be a partnership with us and our Department of Public Works, depending upon the level of dumping, but we have control over it. So if we were to catch people that were doing that, certainly we can take enforcement against them. Well, I guess I was thinking of inside the park. Right. For, for example, um, a couple of years ago, we had a real problem with kids on dirt bikes mm -hmm. roaring, roaring up and down and right. making a heck of a noise up. Would, would the city respond to something like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we, if you, as as a stakeholder and as a resident who's around that, if you hear that, see that, call City Hall, report it to us. Um, we will send our police department out. We can send park rangers out. We can do, you know, different um, means to discourage that. One of the challenges with the motorbikes, as everybody knows, is they're very hard to catch. Yeah. And they're very elusive. And, you know, the minute somebody tries to 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 stop them, they just keep going. But we we understand that's a problem, and that's one of the things that we are going to have to to work through and, and sort of acknowledge that that is a concern with a remote area like this. I'll get to you in just one second, you ma'am. Have we thought about making it a place for either mountain biking and or eventually to dirt biking? There are other parks and state funded parks in Western Maryland that are for dirt biking. I know it's more of a residential area, so. Right. But it'll keep the kids off of the asphalt pavement. Sure. Give them somewhere safe to do it. Right, right. You know, it's not ideal, but what about mountain biking trails? Or yeah, I mean, it used to be horse trails. Right. So so it's 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 open to mountain biking. You know, what what our city, um, our chapter 17, two, which is our park rules and regulations indicates no motorized vehicles. Mountain bikes are not motorized. They're pedal driven. So we encourage people to use our trails in White Marsh Park as well for mountain biking. They're excellent single track. This is a great place for that too. Um, it's just something we're not promoting at this point because we're still struggling with how we're going to redesignate this property for what type of use. As far as dirt bike use goes, um, you know, if if that's something you would desire to see there, we're happy to um, you know to take that under advisement in their comments. You know. Um, I, I don't know where the city will go with that um, because of the noise issues that it generates. Um, there can be some challenges with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one note for that: the property is surrounded by train tracks on two sides yeah. and industrial on the back side. The neighborhood. So the we're familiar with the noises that go on there, right? Um, and it's really and the airplanes, not to mention it, fly directly above. The sure, so it's we'll just another thing, the, yeah. right? Ultimately. Um, if not here, consideration for somewhere else would be awesome. Sure. I mean, and that's something I would encourage you certainly to, you know, council meetings are always open and, and as a resident come to a council meeting and, ex, you know, express some desire for you know consideration to be put into that for, for that type of activity. Um, you know, I mean, everybody has a right to, to, yeah. to recreate in different ways. I can't say that the city is always going to have the, 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 the property for that type of recreation, but hey, you have a voice and, and if it's something you guys yeah. do, no, you should. I've lived here since 92 and I've been riding dirt bikes since then. Um, <laughs> and I have to drive two hours plus to get right on a weekly basis. So right. it gets kind of frustrating. Yeah. 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 I can imagine. A place to be nice. Uh, so I have a whole good like you to us. So great. Sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. I think you know the question. I wasn't quite sure given the Jersey um, barracks that you have up. Was, right. that, was that property or was city owned? Uh, no, but it's still the Jersey barracks keep dumping out. That was. It's, it is a city property that you can actually walk on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can get in there. That's just that we had to put the Jersey barracks where they were so that if, if people were going to dump, it, they would have to dump in the middle of the road, and that would be probably more of a deterrent than it would be if you could get off the edge of the road and keep piling up. So, um, yeah, we there may be some solutions we're working through with this master plan process that help us to address a lot of these issues. You know, technology since 1990 has, has changed dramatic, dramatic or tremendously. We've got 
you know, all types of cellular camera um, abilities now. So, you know, there's a ways for it we can improve by putting uh, camera systems out to help monitor and track, you know, where people are and what's happening. So those might be some things we're going to consider too to help be a deterrent against that type of. Uh, I understand the PMA only talked about what was uh, buying out the first to come with the habitation, you know, to, uh, to uh, I guess, to save natural resources, it's vegetation around vegetation. It's the number of those areas, so the vegetation about what natural resources. It's it's mostly the what's inside the green to protect what's inside the dark green. So if I'm just going to do something, say it's something crazy, like green. Wonder, it's like green. The, the the dark green. The dark green is is the uh, here. The dark green is like the sensitive area. That's the light green, green is, is, this is, is this is this this is the what the the protected area. This dark green. Okay. And this is the wood, the rest of the wooded area. But let's just say we're going to do something crazy like uh, put a Walmart up here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I they, you know, they want you. They want to protect all this from the Walmart and the parking and everything else. You know, so you know you you have to stay out. They would want you to stay out of that unless you absolutely could not possibly do so. So that's the idea behind that. I'll get to you one second. Yes, ma'am. Um, a couple questions because I came in late. Sure. I, um, what is the age of the site? I mean, you talked about growth, uh, different tree growth to let us know how long ago it was developed versus uh, let go natural. So that that's a question I have. And then a, another question I had is you talked about steepness. So what are we talking about in those steeper areas in true elevation change? Yeah, you know, so, this isn't really a good topic. Yeah, you've got elevation changes that go from 150 feet to 120 feet. So you got 30, 30 foot of elevation change from, say, Zug Road to the highest point within the property. So because oh, okay. I know on the one map you had some some darker areas that were sh to show elevation at, and being steep. And so I was just wondering what did steep mean? Steep, okay, steep. <laughs> okay, on, on, on this map, on our site analysis, um, it's, let's see, I'm trying to do this from memory because I'm not looking at it, but I think from 5 to 10 percent sloped, and then from 10 to 20, and then over 20. So you see, that it, if you go up and look closely, the really dark shaded areas are the over 20 percent. So that's 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 what, that's one in five. One over, you know, five foot of, of elevation in every for every foot. So it's, that's really that's really steep. That's really, really, really steep. Yeah. Um, 10 to 20, that's pretty darn steep too. You know, but that's, it's great for hiking, but it's, you know, you still gotta be somewhat of a mountain goat for that. <laughs> um, and then the, the five to 10, that's not so bad. You know, that's pretty average, but it's still in excess of uh, what they consider an accessible slope for, um, you know, federally, you know, ADA law type things for wheelchair type stuff. But those are the, the different degrees of elevation that are that are up there. A slope, I'm sorry, different degrees of slope. That's you know angle versus um, yeah, from from what's gradual to very very steep. And a lot of the steep areas are mostly where you're going down to the creek area. Actually, it's like a creek bank, okay. creating a little yeah. a little I've been back there. Yeah, seen. like yeah, you've seen okay. yeah really steep stuff. And, and a lot of the slope issue is not 20 percent is something that all of us could could fairly easily walk. The slopes have a lot to do with the soils and the erodibility of the soils based on that slope. So that's why that's what comes into play with the county. Yeah, for, for you had a question, right? Well, the second yeah. part oh, of sorry. the age, like, oh, oh, you talked about. Right. Okay. So in the, yeah, in the 18, uh, yeah, you missed the slide because that was way in the beginning. But it, the, historically, this was the Zug farm. It was all farmland. I mean, except for what was uh, along the, the New Stock Ranch. Um, area. So yeah, it's 1938. 38 so as far back as we could go with the aerial, but um it's fine. In 77 it, there was a ball field there and yeah. you see it starts to grow back in yeah. in 20 2000 and then 2022 it's up yeah. virtually all four. So, so it's the, not really old growth. Oh, oh no, not, no, 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 is, no, by no means. Considered to quote unquote mid successional forest. Oh. So they're all yeah, whoops. whoops. Anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let me see if I can do it over here. Um, you saw, you know, all the trees that are that are in here. This was all farmland. I don't know if you can see my pointer on a, this mm -hmm. thing over here, but yeah, this was all farmland for the Zog farm. And over time, you know, the farm fields were abandoned and the trees sprouted up. 
So they're all generally speaking the same age trees. That's how you know it was farmland because then things, you know, seedlings came up all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's how you know that they're all, that it was farmed. It's we have that sort of as proof, so to speak, even if we don't have the aerials to to show that at this point. So um, it's just an interesting point of fact. That's all really at this point. But uh, so you will notice if you walk out there, I and mean, even those pictures that we showed, and you may have missed the pictures, but you know everything's kind of evenly spaced and all pretty much the same height and same size around and all that. So that's that's a result of that natural sort of succession um, as as uh, forest takes over abandoned land. So, so sort of answer your questions. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yes, sir. If this goes through, will there be a parking lot built down there off of Dove Road? We're not that's sure yet. Road? We're not sure yet. That's what the process uh, we're going to have to. It's kind of dangerous parking out there on the Dove Road with those big trucks moving in there. Right, right. Yeah. So, and that's one of our challenges, as as um, Lynette had mentioned. You know, the the site is is it's a difficult site because you've got a lot of this, you know, um, primary management area um, right now. You know, if you were to try to come in here and put parking, we'd have to figure out, will the county let you do it? What is the environmental impacts? Those types of things. So we're not sure yet. If if um, it, it appears that there is a desire to have some limited parking, um, when we mean parking lot, uh, we're probably talking under, you know, under a handful of parking spaces. There's a few um, if we can fit them in there and if the um, environmental um, requirements can be met and satisfied. Right. So, See, at, at the existing entrance now, yeah. there's a spring run. Right. The spring comes, yep. starts back out by the railroad track yep. and comes down through. Sure. Yep. And I know they're not going to let us mess that up. Right. There's a culvert there now where the old gravel road went across. But you're right. Now, with the a lot of the environmental regulations have changed, they've gotten a lot stricter. We and may got, we may be back on this side as well. Right. So we may not have an ability to yep. put parking yep. in. Here and there. So, right there, right, yep. right where you want to come in. So that's one of the biggest challenges. Will the Army Corps engineers have to get involved here? <laughs> it it we're not sure. It depends okay. upon um, you know, if the desire is to have parking. Um, then likely, yes, we're going to have to evaluate and figure out what are, you know, what are the requirements that have to be met and what are all the agencies that are going to want to get involved in review. Certainly the state, the county, the state are going to be involved. Army Corps, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if they would be involved or not. You know, so. Yes, ma'am. To piggyback, uh, whatever you decide to do, or uh, parking is going to be essential. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's essential all over Old Dewey. And particularly if you're going to have people coming to that park, there's got to be a place for them to be. And so there has to be a separate parking area made for them to sure. accommodate them. And I think it's more than a handful. I don't know how many of you count as a handful. I understand. Right. <laughs> I was going to one hand, but but and, and, but but you're right. So so it, it could be that if there is a need to have a dozen parking spaces, the question is, where could it go? And where could you put it to satisfy all the county regulations? So, you know, we're not sure yet. We have to, that's what the consultant will, will be working on as they prepare the master plan. There'll be some scenarios put together where we can look at options. And then from those options, you then have to determine, we go to the next level, which is bringing in and doing more um, focused analysis on those particular locations to determine, is it even feasible to do so? But maybe one of the most expensive parts of, of putting this part together. It, it very well could be, right? Yes. Has there been any discussions with the Northridge uh, HOA as far as, as people accessing the park from the Northridge um, trails? So um, I would need to look at the chat because it looks like there's a lot going on in the chat. Um, we. Is there anybody here? Northridge was they were invited to attend. We've sent everything to the Northridge. We're not on the board, but we do live there. OK, yeah. OK. Yeah. Did you guys get any notifications? There was a sign yeah, was. at one of the stops. OK, so I put the sign yeah. out. There's there's the supposed to be the Northridge Recreation HOA or committee well, or the, group. The Recreation Association okay. is separate from the HOAs, and there's actually several different HOAs in the Northridge community based on the section of Northridge that you live in. Okay. 
Um, I know that our management agency for the HOAs did send out a notice about the meeting um, over a week ago. It kind of didn't make sense to me because there was no context. Um, and it was really Mike S. Steve's um, weekly newsletter <laughs> that made it all make sense and, and put the connections together. Um, so, okay. Um, we are, at least some of us are aware of it. Okay. And the message did get sent out according to proper channels. Okay. So, that was so I, the answer to your question, I'm not sure. It depends upon if there's a significant sort of voice from Northridge. It says we want to be connected. Um, you know, long, long time ago, there was a desire to not be connected. And now we're sort of hearing that maybe they would like a connection. But as Lynette had said, this particular location right here, um, where the HOA's trail ends at the city property line and getting to this connection, um, it's going to be a challenge. You know, if there was that desire to connect, there you would be looking at some type of a bridge structure, superstructure across the, the river. Um, and we're not sure what that would involve or entail. And we just walk off the stream. The, and, and a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, I've done it too. You know, um, but. Yeah. Well, also, the, the neighborhood has a piece of property on the inside of that, I guess, wedge, if you will. Uh, so the property bounds this is like a, that side of it as well. Yeah. That, that the community, has. yeah, the yeah. community, has. right, right. Okay, well, it started out that entrance is actually in a court, yes. So, you know, right, it's residential, so right, you can't build an existing or a, a new parking. No, it, that's the thing, yeah. and that's the challenge too with the North Ridge is that there's it's it's in a residential development, so we, it, you know, if you in try to identify that as being a entry point into the property, where are the people going to park? There's, you know, you're going to take up oh, parking yeah, for yeah. residents. That so. would just be, I guess, residential access only. Right, and that's point. probably what yeah. would end up being is just remaining as a residential yeah. access point. Um, to, to have some spaces designated. Yeah, if, if, if there, the HRA was... If there's, there's designated parking for the townhouses that are in that area, that cul-de-sac, but then there's also visitor parking, which is open. Right. I guess ultimately they could park at the pool, walk down the bike path, and then enter in yeah. the, that trail too, right? Yeah, I mean, that that's already overflow the, parking at this point. That section. Well, well if they, if they that were permitted. That Correct. The yeah. That's not too far from that cul-de-sac where they hold the garage sales. Oh, yeah, the soccer field that they do nothing with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that. <laughs> there's street parking there, and it's sure. an easy walk to that access point. So that's you true. know, uh, unfortunately, none of our our um, HOA representatives are here. Right. But um, you know, there's there's, there's opportunities for discussions. Okay. So it sounds like there might be some interest, at least from yeah. you folks that are here. That yeah. Okay. But, but I guess they also have to have a way to keep people from just wandering into the neighborhood, obviously, right? No. Well, that's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 difficult. it's hard going to say you can go this way, but you can't go this that's way. Correct. Either way. Yeah. You be there, you, right. It would be fair to put a sign right. that says you but can't. That's, that's kind of why I like how, how on, the, on the download it is currently, right? Like, you don't really have to worry about that. And the second you bring attention to it, then you got to start worrying about that. Right. So, right. so there's right. double-edged swords on the right. Yes, sir. Yeah, just returning to the, the property itself, I, I, I visit there all the time. It's really nice property. It's nice. The primitive nature, I think, is really, really cool on the trails. Sure. It would be great if we can increase access so that more people can enjoy it. Right. And I think that's why I really like this um, process. And so I um, just wanted to voice that. Yes, yeah. sir. One kind of specific thing is, sure. you know, from a like an ecological perspective, having so many trails can be problematic for wildlife. So if there's a way to have like a few one or two major trails instead of all these right network that would be a big yeah yeah it's one of the things i noticed too it's yeah that years ago in in early the i guess it was the late 1990s when i started with the city um we would go up there and there was maybe six or seven trails that we had and now there's a lot more fingers yeah. connecting and and it provides more um walking for people but it also bisects the property so it's much harder for wildlife to find sanctuary when there's trails going everywhere so that's something else to to think of thank you but that's a good, good point all right yes ma'am uh, 
Uh, if I can get an email address, I'll share this with you. But um, in 2020, when the pandemic hit, um, I there was a gentleman who was reclaiming some of the trails, going in and and uh, using the the existing trail markers and his own history and knowledge of it. And he did some put. Um, I mean, he had a hand axe and was out there. And we met up with him and he actually sent me uh, and my kids a map of the trails that he knew that were existing. Yep. Um, yep. And I, it's not, it's more complex than I think what I can see from here. Yeah, we, we, yeah. It was we have a picture of it in our- Yeah, there was an earlier picture. We, we obtained that same map. Okay. Yeah, so we have that, and yeah. If you go up closely, these trails, are the same colors as on that trail map okay. up here. I know you can't see it from they, that. Yeah, they probably just yeah. yeah, like I said, he was reclaiming, you know, the trails that he knew were existing. But you're right, right. there's there's a lot of trail there that oh. might need to be limited. Are there any thoughts about what kind of development? Has there been any suggestions for what might be done with the property other than the trails, the existing trails, and maintaining the existing trails? No, other than a desire from uh, for some potentially accessible trails, um, and what we're hearing tonight, which is some sounds like people would like to have parking to some extent, but we're not sure the magnitude of the parking um, and and act in accessibility, you know, act, or I should say access to it, which we got to work through to figure out where can that occur based on the. You know the environmental limitations, so we'll have to see. Well, the um, what I wanted to get to too is I, I'm I'm going to have to follow some of these comments that are coming in too. Um, so I'm still going to get to all you folks in virtual land, but um, to answer your question, um, will be in the last slide was an email address. We do have an email address, but what I wanted to do quickly was then um, share with you what's next. So we got to this point here. Uh, obviously today. Uh, this date, uh, March 20th, will be when the consultant uh, and myself will present to City Council a draft master plan of what we've come up with, which takes into account all of the stakeholder comments and environmental you know, factors, those types of things. Um, our, our plan would be for um, a final master plan um, to be delivered to us by the end of March. And then after that, we would look at the master plan and determine uh, what's implementable. What are the impl implementation phases for whatever the master plan calls for? If it calls for parking, um, we would have to figure out where that's going to fall uh, within the fiscal budget. Our budget year starts July 1, runs through June 30th. Um, we prepare our budgets in October. They're approved in March, April-ish. So like right now, we're, we've submitted our department budget um for review for next year which would open up funding july 1 so depending upon um what phases might be identified and the cost factors we would put that together send it to council uh city manager first he would look at it it would go to council ultimately so there's probably going to be some phasing uh depending upon what the result is from the master plan so but that will happen clearly um you know at least over a year from now um we do have a little bit of funding in the upcoming budget year to do some minor work there, some trail maintenance work and whatnot. So uh, we'll see what we can um, we can get done there based on the outcome of the master plan. But I wanted to just share that with you because some of you may have questions about where we're going. Um, this information is on the city website and I do update it regularly. So you'll see that we're gonna put a little uh, notation next to the 24th that says completed for the stakeholders meeting. And I'm trying to do my best to keep you informed of where we're at, what stages and, and what's happening. Um, this is the main thing. This email address right here is where um, we ask that you do send your comments um, and questions. Um, it's nice to have them in writing. And we're asking that um, we do get those questions submitted by January 31st at 5 p.m. That way the consultant has time to put them all together and we can group them into what falls where and then we can start to analyze all of those questions and comments. So. What I'm going to try to do now is um, take a look at some of these chat uh, comments. Yes. On that particular point, uh, if you have a, um, let's call it a, 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 a group that wants to submit 
um, combined comments, say the homeowners association, or you know, I'm with friends of Tanglewood, right. or the, the maps. Me, is it better to do it as a, as a group, or is it better to do it individually? I would ask that you do it as a group. Okay. For, for your groups, which are kind of like formalized stakeholders, it would be very helpful for us to have those to come through as one submission. From right, thank yeah, you. thank you for that. Yep. Uh, let's see here. All right, folks, I'm going to try to figure out how to do this. Just say as well. Yeah, it's my understanding that this presentation is on the city website. So if you wanted to go back, since you missed, it, missed the presentation, I'm so sorry to say, if you wanted to go back and look through the slides, they're fairly self-explanatory, just to you know get you oriented and see the site, see the aerial pictures again and, and whatnot. So, and also, and this all these slides that we have up here are on that in this presentation. So you could revisit that and see clearer pictures on your own home computer rather than the fuzzy ones up on the screen too, so. Um, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time here, but feel free if you want to take a look at these um, documents or if you feel like you've heard enough from us tonight, um, you're welcome to, to head out. Um, I am going to try to figure out how to read all of these because it's an endless. Um, but I'm going to ask for my IT assistance. Ashley, do you know how I can get to see all these? It is not stopped. <laughs> That's good. But again, thank you for attending. And if you um, hadn't signed in in the back, just uh, before you leave, just do sign in for us. We appreciate that. Thank you. That. That. If anybody um, is interested in uh, joining Friends of Tanglewood, um, I can give you my email address for it, but uh, we're a small group that's, you know, um, does a little bit of trail maintenance in it and hopes to advocate reforms like this. Yeah, um, hope, you know, doing advocation uh, for preserving the, the property and. Uh, How many people in here have been in the park? What do you think about the park as it is right now? I love it the way I it like is. It's a chain. Yeah. Don't pay that kind of Yeah. yeah. Personally. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I agree. The, the, the select few people that know about it should be able to enjoy it. That's about it. Yeah. Like I said, I've lived there since 92, and this is the first up where it's been about it. That's the hard thing ever. Can I get your attention real quick? I just want to go through a couple of these questions here. Yeah, Eventually, 